find the basis of the given plane 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 0. So that's a plane and they're asking to find the basis of this plane. I'm going to um, solve for one of the three variables, either x, y, or z. I'm going to solve for z. z is equals to minus 2x plus 3y, everything divided by 4, which can uh, be simplified further to minus 1 half of x, plus 3 quarters of y. Okay. So, any vector or basis on this plane looks this way. x, comma, y, comma, z. So, what I'm going to do now is substitute the value of z. So, I have the same point or vector, and I'm just substituting the value for z. Okay. So now, I'm going to break this down further into this. x, 1, 0, comma, minus 1 half, parenthesis, Plus y parenthesis zero comma one three quarters. Okay, so <clears throat> in this case, x and y are any real numbers. So I'm going to choose x to be equals to one and y to be equals to zero, and then I'm going to choose y to be equals to 1 and x to be equals to 0 and I'm going to get these vectors. Let me scroll down. Okay. I'm going to get this now. Oh, excuse me. Oh, what is this doing? I'm going to get this, that this vector is obtained when I let x equals 1 and y equals 0. And this other vector is obtained when I let y equals to 1 and x equals to 0 and that is the answer however this is also the answer you can choose uh, whichever of these two answers works for you best so this is also the answer it is the same vectors but they are in column form So it's the same vectors, but they are in column form. And there it is. At this point, this problem is finished. And those two vectors are the basis for the plane. Uh, 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 0. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. Um, why uh, people choose this set over this set. And the reason why they do that, I'll tell you why, is because when you set a linear combination of those vectors, you're going to get them in column form. Check it out. So I'm going to set a linear combination of the vectors. So I'm setting up a linear combination. That's what I'm doing right here. I have the two. I have the two vectors. 
which is the basis. I'm setting it equals to zero. And I'm gonna solve for I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna find the value of Z1 and Z2. And I'm gonna combine this right now. At this point, I'm gonna combine them. I'm doing step by step. C1. So minus one half C1 plus zero C2 three quarters C2 equals zero vector in R3. Okay. So let's combine further. We get this C1 C2 minus one half C1 plus three quarters C2 equals zero comma zero comma zero. Okay. And at this point, I already have the value of C1 and C2, which is zero. So you can see that C1 is equal to zero, C2 is equal to zero, and obviously this term is equal to zero. Three quarters of C2 is equal to zero. Okay. So, excuse me. So what this uh, shows is that when we set the linear combination with those two vectors, we find that the only solution is the trivial solution, which means that those two vectors are linearly independent. But um, the reason why I was doing that is not to show that they were linearly independent, but rather to show that this setup is actually a matrix. So let me scroll down further, down a little bit trying to justify why I did that. <clears throat> Let's see. So you can see, see, you can see that this is equals to, oh, excuse me, I'm not gonna do it there. Let's scroll down uh, up a little bit to show you. I know this takes time. You can see that this is a matrix one, zero, negative one half, zero, one, three quarters. C1 and C2 equals to zero, zero, zero. Okay, what I was trying to show you here is that this setup, this system of equations, because it's a system of, of uh, three equations with two variables, is the same as this um, matrix, this homogeneous uh, system. And so you can see that the vectors right here are in column form, and they form the basis. They form the basis for the no space, but they, you know, they form... Let me show you what I mean. You see the vectors that are in column form? This vector is in column form. This vector is in column form. Scroll on up. And so those are these vectors right here. And so that could be the uh, uh, preference why people choose this to be the answer over this. And you can see that when we set up the um, uh, this equation right here, and we choose the vectors to be uh, to be row vectors like here. Uh, we still end up with uh, with the column vectors. They're already visible. You see, even though they were in uh, row form, we ended up with uh, we ended up with the matrix, and from that matrix we can easily see the basis in column form, and that that's the just uh, justification why. Um, why some people choose this to be the answer. So some people will say that the answer is the transpose of these vectors. And the transpose of these vectors is just these vectors right here in column form. But either one of them is, um, is okay. 
-hmm. It's just, it depends how you, how you want to present it and what you want to present it in that way, in that manner. As a matter of fact, uh, you can see that I present the vector initially right here uh, in uh, like a row form. So this is better for an answer in row form. You can say, well, that, that's why I'm choosing this to be the answer. Um, something else I want to point out too is that X and Y can take on any real numbers, but Z is already um, uh, depends on X and Y. This, this is the value for C. So therefore, you can see why um, even though this plane, this plane right here is on R3, the moment we solve for one of the variables, uh, we're practically saying that um, one of the variables, um, one of the vectors is going to be linearly dependent, linearly dependent, because it's going to depend on the values of x and y. Meaning, even though it's uh, the vec uh, even though the basis is going to be at most three vectors, uh, this is this is saying that it's going to be at most two vectors because one of them is a linear combination of the other two. And so uh, this, this is the basis for this plane. And furthermore, the basis has dimension two because it has two vectors. And that is the end of this video.